Okay, so my wife and I hit 39 years old this year and we got a minivan. Well, we have four kids and that vehicle, a minivan is the vehicle we need, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna have a special guest come here, a friend from high school who's an expert at detailing and he's gonna help me touch up scratches that are through the clear coat and in some cases down to bare metal on this car. So I don't have any good before and after photos of like when I bought it and then while we're doing it, I kind of forgot. But anyway, I kind of want to go over what I did to the car so far. Because when I got it, you know, I bought it from a private party for a good deal. And the thing was nasty. I mean, there was fruit snacks jammed in the seats, Nutri-Green bars. There was apple cores all over the inside. So I spent a good two weeks detailing the interior and exterior. Okay, so let me just talk about the exterior because, uh, you know, in this video we're jumping into touch up paint but let me let me go over what I did okay okay so the first thing I did is obviously wash the vehicle and then I hit it with a clay bar the clay bar pulled all the contaminants off the paint right next up I used the rotary buffer okay I'm a freaking amateur with this thing I really don't know how to use it that well but hey I want to learn right um, so I have this because years ago we owned a boat bought it with severely oxidized gel coat. So it required some wet sanding and then obviously going to town with a rotary buffer and a wool pad to uh, shine it up and obviously then a foam pad. But anyway, rotary buffer is the way to go on a oxidized boat, okay? Um, so anyway, I used the rotary buffer on the car and depending, like on really bad scratches, I used the wool pad and Meguiar's 105 ultra cut compound okay to take the heavy scratches out okay in areas that weren't so bad I used a medium cutting pad and 3d1 3d1 compound is the cut is determined by the pad you use okay this is some kind of weird hybrid compound and polish so if you use it with a medium cut pad you get a medium cut and then you can switch the pads and use the same product and then I got a finishing pad. Okay, so that's what I did. Um, so at the end of the day, the last pass was done with this and the 3D one. Okay, now that took care of a lot of fine scratches and it lessened the appearance of the really deep scratches. Obviously it just smooths it out. So it became 10 times better just by doing this process. But obviously you cannot buff paint if it's missing so that's why so now it's time to introduce the special guest all right so i have matt arndt here from matthew's specialized detailing it's me you got a long name i know like my website some people don't like that <laughs> uh so matt and i go way back we went to high school together haven't really talked in 20 years right yep time goes by fast um and then he started a youtube channel i figured let's reconnect we got some beers and we we're talking perfect and now I need his expertise because I don't know anything about touch-up work. Just bought a minivan for the family. It has tons of scratches on it. It's a nice van. So he's here to touch it up. So Matt, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so uh, definitely auto detailing is my specialty and uh, lots of different services. I really love paint corrections and really turning paint into diamonds. But part of the job is also doing touch-up repair, what we're going to perform here on this Honda Odyssey today and really kind of just to discuss the importance of keeping your vehicle touched up and kind of the threshold of a scratch that might need body work versus something that could be touched up. We got a little bit of variations on this Odyssey today, so we're gonna play around with a couple things. So let's, uh, let's get going. Yeah, so your website is? Sorry, yes, my website is mattswax.com. You can check me out uh, there and see some of my popular services. It's www.mattswax.com. Pretty easy to remember. And uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at Matt's underscore wax. That's it. I had to think about that. <laughs> and you're in the Chicago area, the suburbs, right? Predominantly so. Chicago, yes. I'm, uh, I grew up in Des Plaines with you. Yep. And um, I currently live in Itasca, and I work out of my little boutique shop at my home. It's uh, set up really nice and tailored to really you know, work on high-end stuff. So uh, it's, a, it's a fun place to be, and I have a lot of fun doing what I do. So. Yeah. And uh, quick story. So we used to leave campus. Yep. Go to your house, and you had a dirt bike. What yep. was that thing? Uh, I don't. I think it was a one seventy five. I remember. Kawasaki I don't even remember. It was something. a Kawasaki. Used yeah. to ride it by the tra train tracks. And yes. 
You told yeah. me that story. I totally didn't remember, but then my mind kind of. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I remember. It's now. funny too because <laughs> now I have the snowmobile and I love snowmobile, but my father was just against motorcycles. I don't know what it was. He was like, "You can't have them." So we were we stored a few of them at the house, and then uh, I got in <laughs> I a lot of. I had a lot of fun, but also got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> my excuse was it's my friend's bike. Yeah. But it stayed there forever. Yeah. Yeah, he just keeps it here. Yeah. And that works for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Um, I think that's it. And oh yeah, what's your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is Matthew Specialized Detail. I know it's kind of a long one, and uh, I, I started my YouTube channel. Uh, I think the first video went out maybe like the, the last few days of March, so pretty much April. And I think I got ten videos up now. Okay. And I'm just having fun uh, trying to find my stride, and, and I really want to get into doing more training and more specialty stuff. That's kind of why I came up with Matthew Specialized Detailing. Yeah. I think so it's a good fit. Last week or whatever, you you held your first training class so yeah. you had a number yeah. of students yep and yeah we uh, we're doing a, a training class now that we're working on this has been in the works for a number of years but uh, basically uh, an automotive program that will develop in the coming years but we're starting with our strength which is detailing and um, we're integrating high school students from across the street from the Benito Juarez High School and I, I think it's kind of a really neat program to get younger kids to an opportunity to work with their hands yeah. and and you know we know we're not everyone's going to be a doctor or a lawyer and you know, with the trades and, and integrating electronics into automotives, there's going to be a shortage in the coming future. So I think having the right teachers uh, yeah. and, and making the classroom a fun environment for kids to learn could, could really get an opportunity for kids to work with their hands again. Yeah, yeah. You know what, I'm gonna go in on that class one day. You're Sign gonna, me up. Yes. Get well, with the I mean, and... as the class grows, we'll need your expertise for teaching engine repair. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, so yeah. there's all right. opportunities Perfect. all over the place. Yeah, but, sounds good, Yeah. awesome. All right, let's uh, do a quick walk around. Yeah, and then you'll talk, you see how bad some of these are. Yeah, we'll do um, basically a quick, uh, what I call the phase one inspection, a vehicle walk around. Where we're just going to kind of evaluate um, some of the, the bad areas on the vehicle and assess what is repairable and what's not. Sounds good. Let's okay. get after it. Yep. All right, I'm, I'm basically starting uh, killing two birds with one stone as I do my inspection. I'm going to take a little just lacquer thinner to uh, prep the area so the, the Touch-up paint will bite to the to the clear coat, but clear this scratch is uh, what I call some in balance and some out of balance. We have the scratch that comes over the uh, little variation in the fender, but right here we're going to touch this one up. Uh, drop the touch-up paint in here, let that cure, put the clear coat on top, and then let those dry together. And then we're going to begin our sanding process 24 hours after it's all all done. But I'm just going to wipe the paint thinner on these spots as we go around the vehicle. They're kind of all over the place. I don't know if the camera will pick them up, but, um, and for the folks at home watching, just a typical rule of thumb with a scratch is anytime you're wondering if the paint has gone, take a fingernail and go across a scratch. And if your fingernail stops and you hear a clicking sound like that, that means the paint is gone and is in need of touch up. So the primary reason we really want to do this is because this is exposed metal and if you do nothing it's very likely that dirt and debris will get in there and it'll start to rust very quick so that's really the main objective with the touch-up paint is to protect the panel and and preserve what's left of the paint as we go around you can see this particular vehicle has and, and you know typically with family vehicles you're gonna see scratches all around the vehicle that are what I call out of balance you know you got kids with bikes and yeah, uh, so this this owner had three boys so yeah there's tons of handlebar marks in here you know yeah it's 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 really it's typical you know you start to just get these scratches and they just they, they happen especially if you have a small garage in the winter time you're toting stuff in and out of the you know the the house with kids and and it, it happens but you know i tell people a lot of times what happens with with uh most people don't take the proper care of their car and when they don't take the proper care of the car they'll take it to a place and get it clean and then once the paint comes clean they blame the place that cleaned the car and they say, oh, you know, you caused the scratches and the car was just so dirty that they couldn't even see them. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, you know, like most things in our life, we, we uh, neglect a lot of things, but it simply starts with just doing a walk around of your vehicle. At least if nothing more, you got a few minutes to kill when you're getting fuel at the gas station, put the pump on and take a walk around the car and just, you know, kind of inspect the overall condition of your vehicle. I think we don't do that enough these days, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're also going to get this one here on yeah, the so edge. You can kind of see this one where the paint is exposed. 
and it's already starting to rust but we're gonna put touch-up paint here anyways just to slow that whole process down um, you know and it'll preserve what's left of the paint and you know stop the spread of the rust I too uh, also for you guys watching just a typical rule of thumb I usually just tell people when you're inspecting your vehicle from about if you were to split the vehicle into two sections from the wheels up being the top and the wheels down you're gonna get a lot of rash thrown up by it from the tires especially in a bigger vehicle like this and so a lot of times people are looking at their vehicle from eye level it doesn't hurt to get down low every once in a while and kind of look on the side and see more scratches <laughs> yeah there's a lot on this side yeah there's a lot of scratches but so this whole process is just beginning you know with prepping the area with just a little lacquer thinner so the paint will hold on when we apply the touch-up paint and then we're gonna let all that stuff cure. And then the real fun will begin when we get to actually take the wet sandpaper and flatten down the high spots um, after the clear coat has dried and cured. But that's it. This is a bad one, look at this one. I think this might be actually the longest continuous scratch on the vehicle. And then underneath it, we got a spot where the paint is totally gone right here. So this is going to be a really interesting section to see. Uh, I guess probably this passenger door has got the most isolated damage. So this will be a great before and after section when we're done doing this whole this whole area. See those? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're yeah, pretty. and you know, I was debating not to buy this car because it scratches, but I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I have four kids, dude. You know, they're only going to happen more. You, know, you can be as careful as you want. But, yep. you know, it, when you got kids with bikes and running around, I mean, it's inevitable. It's just, yeah. oh, this is a different one, too. So this looks like, to me, at some point, he probably had the bumper repainted. It usually, looks a little darker, too. Yeah, usually when you get uh, paint peeling in a corner like that, it's a dead giveaway. They probably, you know, the right way to do it is to remove the bumper, paint it, but usually spot repairs, they'll tape in the field, and they'll just kind of come up to a seam, and that's a weak spot, and then, boom, it starts to peel back. Makes sense, because so, it, it is definitely a little darker. Yep. I noticed then, that in the pictures when uh yep and we got a couple of the other ones down here down low like this one being that it's on the plastic what we're going to do with that we're just going to touch it up it's down low we're not going to buff the overlay off but we're still going to uh, add the touch-up paint this is plastic so we don't have to worry about this rusting but nonetheless since we're doing full vehicle touch-up we're just going to hit up everything we can along the way um and i think that's it man uh, come over one more thing i wanted to point out important thing too if you guys are doing touch up at home important thing to look at is just always check the seams of the door because usually you go to the grocery store someone boom they open the door and, and a lot of times when I'm doing vehicle touch up I'll just inspect the corners you can see there's a little spot there and I believe down on the bottom we got a little spot where the metal is exposed to okay so just something to keep an eye out for but now the fun stuff can begin okay cool so I guess the first thing I want to tell people when they're doing touch-up is definitely don't overthink it. And I want to just go over some uh, common touch-up tools. These are just really cool applicators you can get anywhere. Amazon sells them. Uh, they're basically like baby little Q-tips. And I think this one actually has like a, a little bit of a wider top. And I'm not going to use this in this video, but I also just want to show this. This is a very, they call these artist pens. And you can locate these. Typically they're, you know, they're for doing artwork, but... Um, you can actually put touch-up paint here for really fine scratches. The problem that I find with these, especially when you're using OEM touch-up paint, is that OEM touch-up paint it tends to be a little thicker. So if you put OEM touch-up paint in here, sometimes it, uh, it'll clog up this little port. So you might want to thin it out with lacquer thinner and it kind of gets complicated <laughs> doing it. So if you have an opportunity to go to a local body shop or something where they can make touch-up paint for a spray gun, it works awesome in these. So I just wanted to show you that. We're not going to use it today, but that's a, uh, a common applicator. So I take a little tray. This happens to be um, from an Altoids uh, tray. And I just take a piece of masking tape and I put the masking tape. I'm kind of basically making like a paint smock, if you will. And again, you don't have to use an Altoids tray. A great uh, substitute for this would also be a, um, a piece of cardboard. I know these days everyone's getting packages shipped to their house. So if you got, um, you know, stuff from Amazon, just rip off a piece of cardboard. Basically, you just want a straight place that you can take the paint out of here and add to here as I advance around the vehicle. This is my little 
you know, tub gotcha. to, to take the paint. So, and then when we do the clear coat, we'll just put tape right on top of that. All right, we, all right so what I'm gonna do before we get underway here is I'm just gonna take, sorry, I'm gonna try to keep this flat as possible. Take a, hold it? Yeah, can you? There you go. Just take a little touch of paint and I'm gonna make a pile of it with the brush right here. Oh, as I splatter it a little bit, that's all part of the part of the plan, folks. <laughs> so I try not to overdo it because it's it's hot today, and if I put too much, it's going to dry up. So I'm going to start out with one of these, and I'm going to come out to the tray, and I'm just going to basically get my little Q-tip, and I use this to move my paint around, and that's it. Shall we? Yep. Let's do it. So steady hand is as best as you can don't overthink it um we are going to come back in round two of this and sand down the high spots and so i'm, I'm leaving this it's kind of you know going to leave like a little a wide trail and i'm not so worried about that because i'm going to buff off the high spots later so I tell people don't overthink it if you you know you don't necessarily have to buff down this if you're comfortable just leaving it like a little feather like that that's also fine but with this scratch we're just coming right down to the bevel because that's really just the bad area and then we're going to keep advancing as we go around and i'm just going to keep doing touch up quick because this paint's going to want to dry especially on a hot day like today the touch up paint's going to cure quick which is a good thing because yeah, basically um the only the only bad thing about it is that we'll probably use a little bit more touch up paint but when you get touch up paint from the dealer there's more than enough to do you know a complete vehicle touch up like this there'll probably be some leftovers too so again trying not to overthink it um I'm trying to hit those heavy areas where i know like the paint is missing like here so you're applying it and it's clearly going outside of the scratch on top of the paint right and that's yep. okay yep okay yeah yeah, because it, 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 the way it's looking now, like this is a wide tip applicator, it's, it'll fill in and, and fit in that low spot. Your eye is just seeing how wide this, uh, this tip is. And actually, I, uh, I think the, my touch-up pen might be a little bit smaller, so I might actually switch to a different applicator here as we go back and get some more touch-up paint. But be, you know, if I was not going to be wet sanding this, I would probably be trying to be a touch more patient, but I'm not so worried about it for this particular circumstance because I know I'm going to come back with sandpaper and sand off that overlay. Gotcha. So you sand then put the clear or clear on top of this and then sand? No, clear is going to go right on top of the color. Gotcha. Okay, yep. and then you sand. Yep. And keep going. Yeah, see this one's a little bit smaller. It's funny, you're finding areas to touch up that I didn't even know existed. So you got a good eye for this. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even notice that one there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, and like I said, when you start doing this stuff, it's, don't overthink it, you know. Uh, sometimes guys are like, oh, you know, it's, I tell people first, especially with customers, paying customers, the whole, the, the main purpose you wanna do this is to avoid the panels from rusting. And so this is, there's a big difference between paint touch up and paint repair. And I think that's really important for people to know um, that it's not gonna be a flat, perfect surface. We're trying to stop an opportunity that rust might make an appearance and uh, preserve the integrity of the paint and also so it just doesn't jump out at you when you're um, you know when you walk up to the door panel so that that's the main reason we're doing paint touch up set that expectation this is a perfect example for this because this car has got a lot a lot a lot of scratches yep that's going to take us a lot a lot of time to uh to kind of do all this but some of the scratches, like I said, I'm gonna leave this one. I'm gonna leave that one because I think I can remove the whiteness. I'm gonna sand that with 1500 and then come over with a little 3000 and I think we'll reduce that. So I'm gonna just leave that one because that one doesn't look all that bad. But basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking, this is a, definitely a bad one down here because this one's already got some rust showing. So I'm just looking for those spots, especially where I see white or in this case, on this scratch down here, where I see where the paint is completely gone. Yeah, that one's bad. And this one down here, because it, it the way it falls, I'm just gonna touch this up. 
And maybe some of these lower ones, Matt, if you're okay, we, we don't necessarily need to sand the low sections. We can maybe buff. Because sometimes you don't have to sand all of them. Kind of just depends on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go like anything else, you know? Sure. Usually, like in a... In a so in my shop, when I'm doing full vehicle touch-up, I usually charge $10 a panel just to do the touch-up. And then if I got to integrate sanding services... Um, it usually starts to get into about fifty dollars per panel for a number of reasons. Reason number one, a lot more time because um, I can't do it all in one sitting. I got to touch up, let the vehicle sit, so it becomes a two-day job. Um, and it's just a lot of work. There's risk involved because sometimes you try chasing down a little scratch, a little bevel. There's a, sometimes it happens where I, uh, you know, ha have an accident, have an error, burn stuff. Bernie. All right, Matt, it's been, what, an hour or two? No, yeah, about, an, about yeah. an hour, and the now the base coat is dry, and we're moving on to the clear coat. So any clear coat will do. I personally like this stuff. This is a, a lacquered style clear coat, and it seems to hold and maintain its gloss after you do your wet sanding and buffing steps. So uh, you can order this online pretty much anywhere. Check it out. Same thing, I put the, uh, the tape down to kind of just create my smock, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a little bit of the clear coat out of the jar and just make a little pile of it. And again, just like the uh, color coat, I'm gonna have to move around a lot with this because the uh, it's a warm day today, so everything's drying pretty quick. But just like we did before, we're gonna go over and basically just add a little clear right on top. And I know I'm, I'm back to using this wide applicator and don't be so scared that I'm boogering it on because we are going to sand all that stuff down tomorrow. Um, I kind of already, in some ways, made up a, a little mess with this. Not yeah, today. so this is a two day thing. He's here at my house today. We'll go check out his place tomorrow. I'm gonna go back, yeah, it's, it's getting sticky quick. Just clear. That one's gonna be fun. I made more work for myself, but that's okay. We'll make it look nice. That's the goal. Just smooth it out. I don't like that scratch already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's this applicator. I can't tell exactly. Yeah, see, I did. I, this is. I think I am going to go back to that skinnier one. But I'm doing because when we started, I did the fit, the wide applicator, yeah. so I need the wide applicator again to cover this up. That's all right. We'll sand down all those high spots and run it with the rotary tomorrow. And you wouldn't even know they're there, although it looks bad right now. All right, so we reduced it by a drop of. Uh... Yeah, we just added a little bit of lacquer thinner just to thin out the clear coat just a little bit. It's getting sticky out, so it's. It's typical, you know, if you're watching this video and you're in California, you know, in the middle of summer, you might have a harder time doing this, but um, I, again, don't mind being, because we're going to take the extra step and go back and wet sand this, I don't mind if it's a little uneven, because I can fix all that when I start doing my sanding. Again, that's why we kind of call this... Uh, paint touch up and not paint repair and typically you know body work is expensive and a lot of times I think if you can afford to just pay a technician or even you know this is something you could do yourself you can go you know usually if you go to a dealership you know the OEM paints gonna run you anywhere from 20 to 50 dollars depending on 
the you know the make and model of the, the vehicle but you know you get say fifty dollars worth of touch-up paint you know a couple of these little touch-up brushes an afternoon in your driveway and you're touching the stuff up and life goes on so I find doing touch-up work actually rather therapeutic <laughs> other people might disagree but it's fun it's it's just you're just taking your time and so typically because it was so hot like you know we did a, an excessive amount of touch up on this vehicle but we started on the driver's side and it took us probably the better part of 40 minutes to go all the way around and touch up every panel and so in that amount of time it's it's very easy uh, or I should say after 40 minutes the that first base coat the color coat is certainly dry so you can go right behind and put the clear coat on top. And honestly, sometimes guys will, I've seen guys, and, and even myself, if if it's if it's on an edge, sometimes you won't even go back and put the clear coat on, but that's definitely the right way to do it. That clear coat will dry and it, it'll, it'll have a dull look to it. And now I'm starting to, I'm gonna have to add more lacquer thinner. I'm getting sticky to see all the strings. All right, that, that gets the idea across. Let's just go around and finish them all up. Yeah, and then uh, tomorrow will be the fun stuff when we do the wet sanding. Yeah, that process right. is a lot more fun. All right. All right, day two, we're at Matt's garage. Here we are. We'll do a quick walk around a little bit, but what are we doing today? So today, it has been 24 hours yesterday, we were in Matt's garage applying the base coat, uh, color coat, and the uh, clear coat on top. It's cured, it's been 24 hours, so now we're going around the vehicle where we touched up yesterday and actually just kind of sanding down that overlay where the you know the touch-up lies and then we're gonna go behind with the rotary buffer and smooth all that out so really what we're trying to do is um, I use that term overlay right so we put that clear coat on and it's creating like a kind of a high spot and we're taking the sandpaper and just sanding down that high spot and we're gonna heat it up with the with the wool pad and the compound and just move it around so it, this is actually the fun part for me the touch-up part is uh, is kind of tedious when you got the paint and the clear coat and it can get frustrating but this uh, this is when the fun stuff gets going. So that's what we're doing today. Cool. So we'll uh, move the camera and we'll do this front one here. Right? Perfect. All right, Let's do it. Awesome. All right, sweet. So this is the driver's fender. There's a nice long scratch here. This is pretty challenging. And what we're going to do, I'm basically just going to kind of avo avoid this bevel because it's a, it's a spot that's prone to being burnt, especially coming in from the top or the bottom. So when we laid that touch-up paint in here yesterday, I really kind of came up to just to there. So before I even start sanding, I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape kind of there as my guide, just so as I'm sanding, I can kind of sand into the tape and that way I don't have to worry about trying to pull sanding scratches out of there. Sure. Um, yeah, so that, that'll help this kind of just even things out and restore what I like to call balance. That's a term I throw around a lot, balance. Because that's what I'm trying to do when I'm repairing scratches. I want it to be as uniform as possible. So if it's a 10 inch scratch, I just want everything to be flat and smooth. And that's what we're doing. This one down here, if you want to zoom in on that or change. All right, so this one here is a nice challenging little scratch. Um, I certainly slathered the clear coat on heavy right on top of here, so it's just going to require a little bit of extra sanding. And it's right above the turn, uh, or I should say it's right above that bevel. So I'm going to do the same thing just to, just to give myself a guide, just in case when I'm in here with the sandpaper, I don't sand lower than I need to. This way when I'm taking out the sanding scratches, I can just kind of focus on where that clear coat's at. It's a little bit more work up front, kind of like prep work, uh, and then it just makes it a little bit easier on the back side. So right. let me get my sandpaper here. So what I'm doing, I'm taking my uh, fancy little sandpaper. This is a punch out pad. It's 1500 grit. This is Meguiar's Unigrit sandpaper. And I got this fancy little homemade sanding block by my good friend Jason Kilmer. And I'm using the small one because I really, I don't need to sand a lot. I'm only just trying to focus in on this one area, like I said, and smooth out that overlay. So that's why I'm choosing to use just a small section, a small punch out. And we're just gonna get in here and just sand. Light pressure, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, a lot of times you'll start pushing, but if you start pushing, you'll start kind of digging unevenly. And you kind of just want the sandpaper to do the work. If you just kind of just let it go over slowly like that, you're kind of just rolling over the top of it and shaving it down. Gotcha. 
Is that straight water? So this is just pure water, yep. Gotcha. Yep. And that's it, like I said, if you, if you know, a lot of times you see guys when they're, when they start pushing, what will end up happening is even though you got a block, you start kind of digging some uneven uh, scratches that you can remove. It just makes it a little bit more difficult uh, after the fact when you're actually buffing to, um, to smooth those out. So I just like to light pressure, you know, maybe about like every 10 passes or 15 passes, add a little bit more water. And um, when I'm done with this 1500, I'm gonna come back over with 3000 just to smooth that up. I'm gonna move back onto this one. So yeah, like, the, like I said, the tape, the tape is just my guide. And it's, I, put, I put the tape there just to help me um, not sand on that bevel because I can run the machine over there a bunch of times, that's totally fine. But as you can see, I'm also kind of coming across the top of it essentially. Um, on that one, I, I didn't have as much room, so I was kind of following the line. But I, I want to just smooth out that, that overlay. You know, the rest of the paint around it is good. And that's it. Sand, 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 sand. So now I got some Trizac 3000, one inch punch, just to smooth it over the top. And this will just make removing the sandy scratches just a little. So I already hit this once with 1500. Now I'm coming back with my 3000 and my little baby block. So that's a 3M Trizac, right? Yep, 3M right. Trizac. Yep, the Trizac has got that little uh, cushy membrane in there. Yeah. And it, it, it's nice, you know, you can definitely feel the difference between straight paper sanding and the Trizac stuff. It, it, I think the end result is the same, but the, the overall um, process is certainly easier when you're using Trizac. That's for sure. Yeah, that stuff is pricey, man. Yeah, Trizac is not cheap. And actually, I believe 3M is having a price increase September 1st. Oh, yeah? Yep. Yeah, usually, they're good for one or two a year, every year. So, so I can still see a couple spots where I got a few little high spots. Yeah. And I'm just going to kind of just spend a little bit more time right where those high spots are. Just try to shave them out. Now, the good thing about this too, Matt, is that, you know, the, the clear that we put on here is still somewhat fresh. Yeah. So we'll be able to move slash melt some of that around too, which is kind of nice. That's why if you do it within a 24 hour window, it's not fully cured. Gotcha. Versus if you, if you wait so it like a- So it'll flow out nice. Yeah, yeah, it kind of, it, it, it doesn't leave such a, it leaves, I should say, a smoother bevel on both sides. And this was, this was when we were experimenting with uh, those wider tip applicators. Yeah. Yeah, you said you didn't like the scratch from the get-go, so. <laughs> I know. And this is the one we're using for the main take. That's all right. Yeah, let's buff it out and see what happens, really. It's gonna be the fun part. All right, so now we're on to the fun stuff. I'm using my old school Milwaukee Rotary Buffer. And these are uh, Buff and Shine's Euro blended wool pad. Actually, no, it's a, it's a Euro wool pad, wool pad. That's what they are, six inch. And I'm using McGuire's Pro Speed Cut 100. Excellent product, especially for uh, removing out sanding scratches. Water, hit it up. Goes fast when it's just in one little spot. Cool down 
don't know if you want to move the camera a little bit. Uh, Actually, both one. are in shot, man. So oh, they're both good. in frame? Yeah. yeah. This is a, a challenging one. down the side if you want to polish these out. Yeah. down this uh, compound yeah as you use it oh yeah yeah it's got uh, a little bit of that kind of older gritty technology to it yeah. it's a really great it's a polishing compound yeah it works really good in any application you can use it with the DA and the rotary I just like it with the rotary just because it works fast it, yeah it's got a lot of punch to dig and cut out the scratches all right so we're done with our compounding step and sometimes in that compounding step you kind of you, you remove a little bit of the oils and the lanolins in the paint um, so we're just going to come behind with the uh, Obrick Supreme Polish and a foam pad and really this is just uh, gonna add a little bit of clarity back to the paint and smooth things over it's perfect to use right after compounding in a situation just like this foam pad and away we go take a little bit of the uh, where's the technician's choice detail spray tech 582 super easy to use uh, really only sold in the professional market I think you can actually buy it on Amazon now but super awesome product uh, give you a very uh, aquaphobic effect and wax protection and just kind of like a, a spray and wipe just like that boom it's shiny smooth as glass so you can come in later and maybe, you know see it in, in sunlight, but definitely a lot smoother than when we started. And now that color coat and the clear coat have gotten into that valley and have protected this uh, from rusting. Awesome, dude. Looks Sweet. good, man. Thanks a lot, dude. Looks great. It does look good. All right, so here it is all done. Just to walk around far away. All right, so some scratches that really used to jump out is this one back here. That guy, so you can see it, but you know, from a couple feet away, you know, I used to be able to see it from way back here. And then some other scratches were right here on this door. All right, so they're still there, I can see them. But hey, they're not like blaring white scratches. Okay, let's go to the front here. This is the one that we were working on in the video. We did a lot of video on this one here. You can still see it, right? But man, it looks a lot better. I mean, even from 10, 15 feet, that guy was all white and blaring at you. So now, now it's a it's definitely a 20 footer so this thing looks good 
it's ready for road trips and stuff. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. I wish I had better pictures along the way, but hey, it is what it is. Make sure to check out mattswax.com. I'll leave some links in the upper right and in the video description. Check him out. He does some amazing work, and if you're in the Chicago area and you need some detailing, give him a call.